In 2017, Embleton Quarry finally began its new life under the ownership of Embleton Parish Council. This is the story of the quarry and how it came to this point in its long and winding history. In 1864, Thomas Appleby, a stonemason by trade, opened a quarry to extract a hard, dark-coloured rock called windstone. His son Tom worked with him, and two years later another son, Mark, joined the business. The Embleton Quarry was small and situated beyond the northern end of the village. As it became successful and expanded, the nearby village school buildings would one day become a victim. As the quarry developed, it expanded southwards to the village centre and eastwards toward the sea. By 1894, the quarry face was approaching the school buildings and it was decided to demolish them and build a new school in the village. This was opened in 1897. Local children still attend today. As the quarry grew, it quickly became the main employer in the area, employing not only men, but also women and children. The 1901 census lists over 70 Embleton inhabitants as being involved in the quarry working, including independent carriers moving the products. At its peak, the Applebee's quarry business directly employed 80 or more people, including some itinerant Irish labourers who lived in a boarding house at the top of Main Street run by an Irish hawker named Kelly. For many of the men living in Embleton, working in the quarry was a job for life, Thomas Landreth Taylor, for example, started work there in 1867, aged just 10, and he retired 60 years later in 1927. The quarry initially concentrated on handmaking sets, which were basically windstone bricks. The sets were used in house building and as curbstones and paving. However, once crushing and screening equipment was installed in around 1905, the quarry produced a lot more chippings which were sold for road making and other purposes where a dense foundation was required. The aerial view from 1941 shows how the quarry continued working during World War II. It provided material for airfield construction. It was also one of Britain's early producers of tarmac, beginning just after the end of the First World War. Tarmac represented about 25% of total output until the mid-1950s, when production ceased. Until the 1890s, the stone from the quarry was moved in horse-drawn carts to either Craster Harbour for loading onto ships, or to Criston Bank Railway Station for distribution by rail. In 1895, tenders were invited to build a railway line between the quarry and Criston Bank Station railway sidings. The total length of the line was less than one and a half miles and crossed several fields. It included three gated road crossings on the B1339 outside the quarry, on Station Road near where it met the B1340 and at the station. It ran alongside another road to Criston Bank, passing in front of the Blink Bonny public house. In 1904 there was a major change at the quarry. A steam locomotive was purchased to pull the wagons. The locomotive, named Dunstanborough, was of 2 feet 9 inch gauge and built in Germany by Jung. This replaced the horses on the line, but horses did continue to be used until the 1930s to move wagons around in the quarry and up to the start of the railway line. The locomotive proved very successful and a second engine named Fanny Gray, after the wife of Thomas Appleby Senior, was purchased in 1909 from Koppel in Berlin. The importance of the line is clear. In the 12 months of 1913, over 32,000 tonnes of material was delivered along it to the station at Criston Bank. However, because of the considerable amount of handling involved in delivering stone by rail, this method became uneconomic with the advent of mechanised road transport. The line was closed in the 1930s, but both engines survived the war and were only scrapped in the late 40s, early 50s. Criston Bank Railway Station closed in 1955. During the 1920s and 1930s, the firm ran two coal-fired, chain-driven Sentinel road wagons, which delivered stone as far as Newcastle. After the closure of the private line, all distribution was by road. The quarry's first petrol-driven vehicles were four Bedford lorries, each able to carry approximately three tonnes. By this time, the workforce had been reduced to about 40 people due to mechanisation. Then, in the late 50s, the quarry became uneconomic to operate because of the increasing amount of overburden topsoil, clay and sandstone that needed to be removed before the windstone could be quarried. 
production at Embleton Quarry ended after the last blasting in January 1962, and the Applebee's lease expired in November 1963. Dismantling and disposal of the plant and machinery and the disposal of the remaining stocks of Winstone took a further two years. The quarry stood empty and unused for five years, and then, in 1970, it was purchased by Annick District Council from the then owner, Sir Arthur Sutherland. It was used as a council tip until 1984, with vehicles bringing domestic waste to it from the surrounding area. Over the 15 years, so much household waste was dumped that the floor of the old quarry was buried 30 feet beneath it. The decomposition of the waste was to have unforeseen consequences for the quarry's future. The villagers were concerned about what would happen with the site, and a public meeting was held in Embleton to discuss and agree that the western end of the quarry be developed to provide recreational facilities, two-bedroom bungalows and craft workshops with the eastern end being used as a nature reserve. Annick District Council offered the quarry site for sale in 1988 with outline planning permission for recreational development. Their advert promoted a unique opportunity for a developer to provide up to 50 caravans, chalets and associated leisure facilities within the Northumberland coast area of outstanding natural beauty. A village committee was formed to oppose the council's plans. The committee wrote to each member of the council and started a press campaign warning of the gas hazard which was evident at the quarry due to decomposing waste. The council eventually accepted the danger the gas presented and withdrew the site from sale. Gas vent pipes were sunk at various points in the quarry and the emissions from these monitored on a quarterly basis. The site was saved. The quarry was, however, left to itself for many years and became overgrown. In 1999, there was a third village meeting about the future of the site. There was a feeling that at least part of the quarry should be retained as a recreational and wildlife area. In 2008, the parish wrote a parish plan which involved a survey of the local community's views. Over 80% of responding households wanted the quarry to be tidied up, turned into a nature reserve, or at least remain as it was. In 2015, the western side of the site was used by Northumberland County Council, who were now owners of the quarry, to build 16 affordable homes. But then things changed course again. The old quarry house, which was occupied until the mid-1970s, had been vandalised, re-roofed and vandalised again. By 2016, it had become dangerous. Added to this, Northumberland County Council had embarked on a programme of selling off unwanted assets, so the remainder of the site was offered for sale. Embleton Parish Council approached the vendors about the availability of the quarry site. Their plan worked, and by the end of 2017, the Parish Council were the new owners of most of the site through a community asset transfer deal. The Parish Council were restricted to developing the quarry as an open recreational space, including a nature and wildlife site, reflecting what the local people had wanted.